Hi, my name is Tyra Romero, and I chose Angela Davis for Black History Month. So Angela Davis was an educator and activist. She became known for her involvement in a politically charged murder case in the early 70s. Influenced by her segregated upbringing in Birmingham, Alabama, Davis joined the All Black Panthers and All Black branch of the Communist Party as a young woman. She became a professor at UCLA, but fell out of favor with the administration due to her ties. Davis was charged with aiding the botched attempt of imprisoned Black radical George Jackson and served roughly 18 months in jail before her acquittal in 1972. After spending time traveling and lecturing, Davis returned to the classroom as a professor and author several books. She was born on January 26, 1944 in Birmingham, Alabama to Saley and Frank Davis. Davis knew about racial prejudice from a young age. Her neighborhood in Birmingham was nicknamed Dynamite Hill for the number of homes targeted by the Ku Klux Klan. As a teenager, Davis organized interracial study groups, which were broken up by the police. She also knew several of her young African-American girls in Birmingham church bombings in 1963. Angela Davis later moved north and went to Brandeis University in Massachusetts, where she studied philosophy with Hilbert Marcus. As a graduate student at the University of California, San Diego, in the late 1960s, she joined several groups, including the Black Panthers. Hired to teach at the University of California, Los Angeles, Davis ran into trouble with the school's administration because of her association with the communism. They fired her, but she fought them in court and got her job back. Outside of academia, Angela Davis had become a strong supporter of the three prison inmates of Soleil Prison, known as the Soleil Brothers. They weren't actually related, fun fact. These three men were accused of killing a prison guard after several African-American inmates had been killed in a fight by another guard. Some of these prisoners were being used as scapegoats because of the political work within the prison. During Jackson's trial in 1970, an escape attempt was made when the Jackson brothers, Jonathan, entered the courtroom to claim hostages he could exchange for his brother. Jonathan Jackson, Superior Court Judge Harold Haley, and two inmates were killed in the ensuing shootout. Angela Davis was brought up on several charges for her alleged part in the events, including murder. She went to hiding and was one at one point was the FBI's most wanted before being caught two months later. Her case drew attention of the international press and spent after spending roughly 18 months in jail, Davis was acquitted. Every voice and sing to earth and heaven. Ruby Bridges was six years old. She was the youngest African American girl to attend an all white elementary school. William William France Elementary School was in Louisiana. In 1960, Ruby Bridges paved the way for all young black girls and boys. She was escorted to escorted to school by her mother for for a, for a year. She was brave but also afraid of all the main things she saw she saw on her way to school to, she saw on her way to school but she didn't let that stop her she kept going and now i can too and now i can too we are no longer separated but united together the end ring with the And this is my sister Sophie. And today we're going to talk all about Bob Marley. Robert Nesta Marley was a Jamaican singer, songwriter, and musician. Considered one of the pioneers of reggae, his musical career was marked by fusing elements of reggae, ska, and rock steady, as well as his distinctive vocal and songwriting skills.
Marley's contribution to music increased the visibility of Jamaican music worldwide and made him a global figure in popular culture over for over a decade. Over the course of his career, Marley became known as a Rastafari icon. He, uh, he infused his music with a sense of spir spirituality. He is also considered a global symbol for Jamaican music and culture and identity and was controversial in his outspoken support for democratic social reforms. In 1976, Marley survived an assassination attempt in his home, which was thought to be political motiv politically motivated. He also advocated for Pan-Africanism. What do you know about Bob Marley, Nazir? He died at 36 years old. And he was one of the most respected singles in the world. The present has brought us Hi, my name is Kira Brett, and today I'll be talking about Lupita Nyong'o. Lupita was born in 1983 in Mexico City, Mexico. Her parents, Dorothy and Peter A. N. Nyong'o, were in political exile at the time of her birth but were able to return to their homeland of Kenya during their daughter's childhood. Her father later became part of the country's Senate, while her mother, who worked in family planning, took a leadership position with the Africa Cancer Foundation. Having taken to drama and obtaining the lead role in a production of Romeo and Juliet, Nyong'o also returned to Mexico during her teens to learn Spanish. She went to college in the United States, studying at Hampshire College in Amherst, Massachusetts, and earning her degree in film in 2003. Upon returning to Kenya during school summer vacation, Nyong'o discovered that filming for the drama The Constant Gardener was happening in her area. She joined the set as a production assistant and met Ralph Finnis, who told her to become an actor only if it was something she couldn't imagine doing without. She directed and produced the albinism documentary In My Jeans and starred in the TV series Sugar. Nyong'o returned to the States and, pursuing her interest in acting, earned a master's degree from the Yale School of Drama in 2012, having performed in the works like A Winter's Tale with the school's repertory theater. Nyong'o went to earn, an, earn a claim for her role as Patsy in 12 Years a Slave in 2013, for which she won the 2014 Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. The following year, she starred in Star Wars The Force Awakens and the off-Broadway play Eclipse. The actress also featured in prominently box office shattering superhero flick Black Panther in 2018. She has been in over 16 movies. Loud as the rolling sea. Hi, I'm Marley Jackson and I will be reading about Serena Williams. Serena Williams was born in Saginaw, Michigan on September 26, 1981. She is 40 years old. In 1983, her family moved to Compton, California. Serena learned to play tennis from her father on the public courts in Los Angeles, California in Los Angeles, California, and turned professional in 1995. She is a fabulous tennis player who has won 39 Grand Slam titles. Her first Grand Slam at age 17, 23 singles titles, 14 doubles titles, and two mixed doubles titles. She is a four-time Olympic gold medalist and has won over $94 million in career prize money, more than any other female athlete. Not many know about her business off, off the court. Apart from being the former world number one tennis player, the 40-year-old American is a genius investor who had, with her diversified 
port portfolio of businesses. She also started started S by Serena, a complete e-commerce clothing line. Rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound. Hi, my name is Haley Johnson. My hero is Jackie Robinson, and I'm gonna tell you a story about Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson was born on January 31, 1919. He and his four siblings was raised by a single mother. He was a star athlete in high school and at the University of California. In 1945, Jackie Robinson started his baseball career in, in the Negro Reads. Black players had not been allowed in the major league since the 80, 1980s. He started looking for a position in the majors. In general, ma manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, impressed by his skills, signed him up for one of their farm clubs. He warned Warbison that he would face abuse and he was right. But for a young player, it was worth it. On April 15, 1947, at first base for Dodgers, for the Dodgers, he became the first African American to play in a major league in the game. He won he went to he went on to become the natural lead most valuable player and helped the Dodgers win the nineteen fifty five World Series. He died on October 24, 1972. Loud, loud as the rolling sea. Langston Hughes was an African American author. He believed in his job was to celebrate the story of his people. He was born in Missouri on February 1, 1902. When his parents divorced, he lived with his grandmother at 13. He joined his mother and her new husband. He wrote um, He wrote his first poems then. After high school, he spent some time in Mexico and a year at Columbia University. He took odd jobs to cover the bills. Working as a sailor, he traveled to Europe and Africa. His first book of poetry was published in 1926. Then he returned to college, graduating from Lincoln University in 1929. He was one of the founders of the culture and movement known as the Harlem Renaissance. He wrote innovative poetry that integrated jazz rhythms. He was also a successful playwright. I think he was died on May 22, 1967 in New York. His home in Harlem became a landmark. soldier, he took off his coat, they were very polite, rolled up his sleeve. And his mother saw something. He had been sold from her during slavery in the early days. She saw something on his arm. She saw a birthmark. 
a mother know her children. She saw a birthmark on his arm. He had came back and liberated her and the family. Bless you.